in today's lesson, we're going to look at the different ways in which uh, countries can reduce the development gap. And we're look, going to look at that idea through discussing debt. So before we start looking at what debt is, we need to kind of understand how uh, um, places and countries can get into debt. So here's an example. If I was uh, about to buy this house, I, I probably wouldn't be able to afford it straight out. So I would have to get a loan from a bank to be able to uh, pay for it. Similar thing happens to countries. Countries that are often uh, developing, who don't have lots of money, uh, they will have to uh, get loans either from other countries or from organisations like the World Bank uh, to be able to fund big infrastructure projects. Obviously, the issue with that is these projects often require very, very big loans, especially if you don't have much money in the first place. The issue with that, obviously, is that these loans at some point have to be paid back. And if you can't repay those loans, then we get into this idea of uh, debt. And debt essentially means that it's where you owe somebody um, something else. And usually when we talk about it in international terms, it's where money is owed by one party to another. And when we talk about parties here, we're talking about countries. So it's where one country owes another country or an organisation like the World Bank a lot of money. The real problem for this in terms of a development gap is that the developing countries often are paying more debt back than they actually get from either the exports they sell or the aid they get. Here's a really good graph to show that. It shows you that for every one dollar that they are getting from exports or aid, um, money being sent back from people who have migrated, they're actually losing um, or having to pay back two dollars. And often lots of that is where it's money that's come from. Uh, the developed world that's been given to them so even in the form of loans and this idea that debt often builds up for these developing countries we can see that in this um, uh, gif here which is showing that the levels of debt that people need to pay back in in countries especially in sub-saharan africa are generally getting um, worse year on year and it can be as high as up to 15 percent of, of all the, the revenue that a government will um, actually have. So there is a solution to this. One of the solutions is the idea of debt relief. And that essentially means that debt is cancelled out. So it's the forgiveness of debt. And this is um, so organisations that owe a lot of debt, or whether it's individuals um, or corporations. But usually in the context we're talking about is about countries, sovereign states, where their, their, their debt is cancelled out um, or they try to come up with a system where they have to pay it over a longer period of time. So they recalculate it. But the, the idea I want us to get used to is that this I, the debt is normally just completely scrapped um, uh, from their kind of payment. This, is, this was brought in um, by some big organisations, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, where these international organisations came up with this plan and one of the plans they come up with was um, the, called the Heavily Indebted Poor Countries Initiative, or HIPC. And that was focusing on 39 countries who they thought were the, the poorest and the most in debt and could do with having debt taken away. Once you take all that debt away, it can obviously have both benefits and negatives. And in terms of develop, uh, uh, reducing the development gap, we need to look at both sides. So in terms of benefits, that money that was going to be spent on debt can actually be used for other things. So it could be used to be spent on the healthcare system. It could be used to spend on education. And examples of two countries in the HIPC that had their debt removed. Well, Zambia actually spent that money on healthcare. It spent it on antiretroviral drugs to help people that had HIV. In Ghana, they took away all the primary school fees and that meant more young children were going to school, which in the long term means that they've got a better educated um, group of children, a workforce, and therefore they, they have the ability to develop at a faster rate, especially in their economy. Obviously, there are limitations or, or negatives to the idea of debt relief. One of the, the obvious ways is that um, if you get rid of debt, it doesn't solve problems that often plague countries. So it could be 
the idea of corruption. That's not going to be solved by getting rid of debt. Also, it's one of those things where you could write off a debt and then a country just gets itself into more debt because they know that that um, their, their debt might be written off again. In terms of scale, we can also say that in sub-Saharan Africa, there's £702 billion worth of debt still. It, we look in the um, Western world and in developed countries, there's lots of debt as well. So is this, country, is this actually solving a problem or is it just kind of the tip of the iceberg? Have we actually solved a major problem here? And the last thing is there are loads of countries that are in debt. And so the only 39 countries isn't really going to make a huge impact. So these are the kind of both advantages and disadvantages in terms of debt relief and how it can reduce potentially the development gap.